Hello everyone! Welcome to Birch and Lily. My name is Amanda and this is a channel about knitting and cross stitch. Today is August 27th and I am coming to you on a very very warm day. Like usual in the summer, I am dying from the heat of my studio lights and as you can tell I also have a little bit of a cold. I am just getting over it so hopefully it's not too bad. I can tell I'm a little bit stuffed up, but I'm not coughing too much anymore. So I have my trusty water here beside me and hopefully I can make it through this episode, but keep it a little bit short for my sanity. Um, so before we get started with the content today, I just want to let you know where you can find me on the internet. You can find me on Instagram at birch.and.lily and you can find me on Ravelry as Birch and Lily. If you have any questions about what I talk about today on this episode, you can find all of that information down below in the show notes. And as always, I want to say a big thank you to all of my returning viewers and a big hello and welcome to anyone that is new here. I am stumbling over my words. <laughs> that is normal though. If you haven't been here before, get used to lots of tongue-tiedness. I think I talk a little bit too fast sometimes and I just can't get the words out. But here we are. I hope you enjoy. Um, one other thing that I did want to say before we get started, I think I've said one other thing three times now, <laughs> is that over on Instagram, I just hit 2,000 followers, which is insane and super, super exciting. So I wanted to let you know that if you aren't following me over on Instagram already, you should definitely do so because I am hosting a giveaway on my Instagram for a couple skeins of yarn. So I will grab those really quick and give you guys a little sneak peek of what I will be giving away. So this is the prize for my 2000 follower giveaway on Instagram. So if you want to win these, please make sure you go over to my Instagram, like I said before, at birch.and.lily and enter into the giveaway to have a chance to win these beautiful four skeins of yarn. Let's get into knitting. First project I have on my needles are my Irving socks. This is a pattern by Jacqueline Salem and they are in a bag by Birch Grove, one of my favorites. The yarn that I am using for these socks is a Woolberry Fiber Co. Gilmore Girls sock set. This one is called Vicious Trollop. This was the August 2018 uh, Gilmore Girls sock club. If you like it, I'm sure there are some people on Ravelry that have it available on their Ravelry D stash. But this is where I am. So look at me, I forgot my progress keeper. I will remember to put one on when I clean up at the end of this episode. So I think last episode I was somewhere around here on the sock. So I have done quite a bit. I have finished my heel flap and heel turn and I am working on the gusset right now. I think I did about nine repeats on the leg and then moved into the heel flap and gusset and all of that. Um, so yeah, it has, I guess I'll flip it this way because that's the way the sock goes, this beautiful pattern on the front. Um, I cast on 66 stitches, which is one of the sizes that the pattern calls for. And I did substitute in a twisted or a one by one twisted rib. I believe it just called for a one by one rib, but I find mine is quite loose and messy. So I didn't want to do that because I knew I would be unhappy. And the back just has some stripes of pearl stitches typical slip stitch heel flap. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this pattern. Uh, it's been knitting up really quickly. I did have a lot of guests visiting, or me and my husband had a lot of guests visiting in the past week, two weeks, I guess since the last episode. So this was something that I worked on a lot just because it was easy to pick up and work on while I was talking to the people that were visiting us and spending time with them. And I've really been enjoying it. So 
Hopefully I'll have the next sock, or this sock at least, done by the next episode and started on to the next one. I always have socks in my arsenal. It's the easiest thing to pick up and work on and be able to set down easily because a round is so quick. It's not like a sweater or something where sometimes you have to finish a whole round that can be like 200, 300 stitches before you can set it down. So they're my go-to. So those are my Irving socks by Jacqueline Salem. Oh, and before I forget, those are on 2.25 millimeter needles, US ones, as are all of my socks. It's very rare that you will see me change to something else. So like I said, I'm hoping this will be a little bit shorter of an episode today, mostly for my sanity. Um, but while we're on the topic of socks, let's jump into the other pair of socks I have on my needles right now. These are knit out of a Maker's Haven Club yarn. Last episode I did say the name of it. I'm not gonna say it again because it's really long and very hard for me to memorize, but I am knitting the Cozy Autumn Socks. This is a pattern by This Handmade Life. I have modified it slightly. Um, instead of using the cuff that is called for in the pattern, I did substitute in the Pico cuff that is used in the Sweet Sadie socks that I finished, I believe last episode I showed them finished on that episode. Uh, so yeah, I substituted that in for the cuff. So, no progress keeper again, because I really wasn't paying attention last week, but I think I only had about one repeat done on the leg last week. So I was probably about there. So, these socks as well, I have finished the leg, and I have done the heel flap and heel turn and started into the gusset. Apparently, that was what I did when we had guests over. So with these socks, I have used a little bit different of a slip stitch heel flapping gusset. Actually, one sec. I didn't mention that I did the same thing on my Irving socks, uh, where I did a little bit of a garter panel down the edge of the heel flap. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess maybe the Sweet Sadie socks made me decide I wanted to do that a whole bunch, but I just like it. I find it does make it a little bit easier for me personally to pick up the stitches on the side of my heel flap. I don't know, it just looks a lot neater than when I do just like slip stitches along the edge of my heel flap. So yeah, I've really been liking that. So that is what I included in this sock as well. So these are a little bit shorter than I usually make my socks because they will be a gift. And I know most people that get gift socks, at least most people that I knit gift socks for, they like their socks a little bit shorter. So that is what I've done. And yeah, it's just working out beautifully. It's a mock cable. I love mock cables. They look so pretty, but they're so effortless compared to a normal cable. So yeah, we'll get the gusset finished up on this pair of socks by the next episode. Hopefully have at least one sock finished. If I got two finished, that would be awesome. Um, and we'll go from there. I'm just gonna forget to tell you guys the needles I'm using this whole episode. These are on 2.25 millimeter needles, US ones as well. And when I did the Pico cuff, I did use a two millimeter needle. So is that a point, a US point five? Zero is zero, I think, actually. Um, yes, a US zero. So just to make it a little bit more snug, because it is just stockinette instead of a rib, it doesn't cinch in on your leg like a normal, typical rib on a sock would. So going down the needle size just makes it that little bit more snug. Okay, so that is all for socks this episode. This is going really fast, which is awesome for me editing-wise and breathing-wise. And um, I am recording a little late today because I'm not sure if I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, my neighbor has a wood chipper out because we had a big storm go through that knocked down a whole bunch of trees and he has been wood chipping all morning. So I was waiting in hopes that he would stop 
I think he has. Hopefully he has, because I really hope you won't hear anything in the background. I haven't heard anything yet, so I think it should be fine. But I didn't do tons of knitting in the past couple weeks either because of the guests, so yay, short episode, quick and fun, I guess. So we have one final project to show you guys. Last episode I did show you the yarn for this. This is my Novelli Tea by Caitlin Hunter of Boiler Knitworks. It is in the same bag that I used for my last sweater. I will link it down below. Uh, it is from, I think I looked it up and it was somewhere in Denmark. Um, but it has this beautiful pattern inside. It's nice and big, big long straps. Perfect for toting my sweater knitting projects around the house. This is yarn from Cozy Posy Yarn and it is on her cloud base, which is a 100% superwash merino single ply. It's a fingering weight. And these are the colors that I am using for my sweater. So this here, this beautiful golden, yeah, golden color is honeycomb. This here is maple. And this color is called Luna Moth, and it is Luna Moth with no speckles. So she must have a colorway called Luna Moth that has speckles on it as well. So this is a beautiful tonal. So I have cast on what I ended up doing after I did my not so much gauge swatch. I, <laughs> I didn't gauge swatch, I just started knitting and measured off of that and figured out what fabric I liked and kind of went from there. So I ended up going down a needle size for both of the needles in this pattern. I used a three millimeter, which I believe is a US two and a 2.5 millimeter, which is a US 1.5, I think. Don't quote me on it, <laughs> but you can look that up. And what I ended up doing, I wanted to cast on a size small, but going down the needle size would have made it too small but I didn't like the fabric with the called for needle size, so I cast on for a size medium in the smaller needles. So this is what we have going so far. I'm really, really liking it. It's so pretty. And yeah, I'm much happier with this fabric now. It's definitely still airy, which I've become used to with Caitlin Hunter pattern. She knits everything quite, I hate to say loose, but quite airy and quite flowy. So I like that. I hope that means I'll be able to wear it more in the fall and the spring as well, not just winter. And yeah, we'll keep working away on this. I'm about, I would say a third of the way through the color work in the pattern. And I guess I can show you my floats because I am pretty darn proud. I'm pretty darn proud. I'm pretty darn proud of these floats. So, yay. So yeah, I guess we'll keep knitting away on that. I'm not sure what else I can really say about it. I'm not super far, obviously. So I guess, yeah, we'll leave it at that. And you can see where I'm at next episode. I will put a progress keeper on this too. That is the reoccurring theme of this episode. Progress keepers. Or at least remembering to put them on projects, which I'm very bad at. Can you believe we are almost at the end of knitting? I cannot. I'm used to having so many projects on the needles, but with people being here, I was being good and disciplined and I did not. So the last thing that I have to show you is my typical Desert Vista Dye Works monthly knit along socks. These socks I did show you last episode. I think I was about halfway through the first sock. They are completed now. I cast on 60 stitches for all of my stockinette socks. I do a two by two rib and I just knit until I feel like it. There's no set length that I ever really knit them to. I just go. Um, I use an afterthought heel for these and a typical wedge toe. And here they are. 
So this is the Peppermint Slice colorway by Desert Vista Dye Works. It is on her 7525 base, which is her Viso base. And I finished them in time to stay in the knit along. Yay! So basically how this knit along works, I know I reiterate this a lot, but just so you understand why I have been knitting Desert Vista Dye Works yarn all year, she has a knit along that if you knit a pair of socks every month in her yarn, there are a whole bunch of prizes. So for finishing six months worth of socks in 2019, I did win a free skein of yarn. I had a choice of any of the colorways that she produces. And then if I make it all the way to the end of the year, 12 pairs of socks, I will win an exclusive self-striping colorway that is only for the people who participated in the knit along. So that is my goal. I am halfway through, so I want to finish this year, but I have mentioned before, I don't think I'll be doing it again next year, just because I have so much yarn that I want to give love to that I haven't been able to since I've been exclusively knitting Desert Fisted Eye Works self-striping this year. So, yeah, I think that is all I have to say about the knitting. I can't believe I'm only at 20, not even at 20 minutes. Wow, that was very fast. So if you were just here for the knitting content, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming and watching me and I hope you were inspired. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below and make sure that you check out my giveaway on Instagram. Don't forget about that. It will be running till the 31st of August and then I will draw the winner the following week. So as you know, or if you've been here before, I do cross stitch a little bit as well. So I have two projects to show you that I have been working on. If you watched last episode, you know that these projects have not been causing me much joy because I keep miscounting and messing up. So I have one victory and I have one not so victory to share with you guys this episode. So let's start with the not so great, I guess. Get the bad out of the way first. So this is my September Little House Needleworks cross stitch. Um, it is in a bag by Pretty Southern. Little sneak peek. Ah, uh, yes, it is in a bag by Pretty Southern. So yeah, basically what happened with this one, last episode I had miscounted the border for the second time, so I decided to pull that out and start on some of the stuff in the middle of the border just so I could get myself going and feel a little bit accomplished and work on the border again later, which I did, and was working out, it was working out well for a while. I have threads everywhere because of how much I keep messing up. Um, but when I picked this back up yesterday, I worked on the whole house and then realized when it was done that I was a row short. So the house was a row short. So by that point, I was frustrated and I was like, yeah, no, I'm not redoing the house. So then I had to kind of sit and rework the grass which I thought would be easy but I messed that up a couple times and yeah so I think I'm back on track now I've gone around and counted everything like six times and I think I'm back on track so my goal is to work on this as much as I can in the next week because it will be September next week and I want to be able to put this up because it is the September one I'm sure I've showed you guys a picture of it somewhere up here already um, finished or what it should look like finished but yeah so I'm using all of the call for colors on this I am stitching it on 32 count natural linen and it's frustrating because I really like it fall is like my favorite season and this is the first of the yearly cross stitch from or yearly cross stitches from Little House Needleworks that is fall themed and I was so excited for it and now it's just frustrating me, <laughs> but, but yeah, like I said, I'm back on track and I'm going to plow through it and I will get it done and it'll look so pretty when I am able to finish it and put it up 
on my shelf for the month of September. Okay, so the other project I have been working on, like I said, is a little bit of a victory. This one I had messed up on counting as well, but I was able to fix it and I'm back on track now. So this is Sunflower Manor by Hands On Design. It is a collaboration with Priscilla of the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. She draws up the truck draw. Yeah, being stuffed up makes it really hard to talk. Um, so she draws up the chalk drawings that are the inspiration for these cross stitch patterns and then the designer of hands-on design turns them into cross stitch. So this is Sunflower Manor. It's in another pretty southern bag by the way. And and I am stitching this up on 28 count black chilblin. And look how pretty it is! You can't even tell that I made a mistake. So I'm not even gonna tell you where the mistake is because I fixed it and, well, I fudged it so that it looks fixed. And yeah, I'm not telling you where the mistake is because it looks so pretty. So the whole first page is done now minus the Smyrna crosses. Um, there are a whole bunch filling in kind of those little black areas around it. And now I am working on the second half as you can see from the picture that I popped up on the screen, it has home written down below it and it's super cute and I can't wait to put it up because it's fall and I love sunflowers and yeah, it's so pretty. So if you have been watching me for a little while, you'll have seen that I finished the summer one of this series a couple months ago and I never did get it fully finished to hang up on my wall because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do but I was at Hobby Lobby last week with my mom and I think we figured out what we're gonna do now so I just need to head back there and bring the cross stitch with me so I can hold it up and make sure it's gonna work and yeah I'll go from there and hopefully have this beautiful beautiful thing hanging up on my wall for the next upcoming fall season so yeah, all called for colors. I believe the pattern calls for a 32 count, but I'm using a 28 and I just love it. Yeah, that's about all I have to say. So that is my very short episode 18. This is not normal for me. Usually I am sitting at like 40 minutes for an episode, but yeah. With having guests, I kind of stuck to a couple smaller projects, and that's what I worked on, and it was good. I really liked it. I liked being able to put my effort into a couple things and to really notice progress on them. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found some inspiration, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me below, and I will see you guys on the next episode.